Bienvenidos a Trek Boss Show. Are you ready for today's show? Because we have a good one for you. Today we have Freight Rates Part 2, Trucking Trends in 2021, Walmart's first 5 million safety driver, FMCSA DLT Physical, How Truckers Brighten the Day of a Little Boy Battling Leukemia, and Matt's Advice to New Entrants. <laughs> kickstart the show, here's the second part of freight rates. In part one of our series on freight rates, we looked at truck operating costs and why one leading expert says roads would be safer if we paid drivers 60 cents a mile over costs. That's pretty close to how things were done back in the day when unions and trucking companies worked with the Interstate Commerce Commission to set regional freight rates before deregulation in 1980. I've been doing this for, you know, this research for 15 years or so. So uh, when I started it, there was still a significant population of, of drivers who had who had lived through deregulation and the, and the pre deregulation years, uh, or you know the, the regulated you know industry. Um, some of which were owner operators, and some of those owner operators, I remember interviewing a guy. I think his his license had four digits, his operating authority. He had inherited from his father, um, who had been a you know coast to coast hauler back in the day you know, uh, of heavy equipment. And that's still what, um, what this guy did. He was in his seventies at the time. Um, and all those older, you know, uh, drivers who had been operating small businesses at the time of, of, um, deregulation told me didn't quite get out of it what we'd hoped. Um, you know, of course they wanted access to, you know, markets, they wanted access to regulated freight, um, and they got it, but they also, you know, got a lot more than they bargained for in, in the kind of competition that there was. Deregulation disrupted the industry, creating opportunities for independent owner operators at the expense of established regional carriers that had invested in warehouses and distribution centers that were expensive to maintain and unnecessary under the new nationwide operating authority. At first glance, it might not look so bad. The blue line here is total annual trucker compensation, as estimated by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Owner-operators tend to make a little more, but overall, the trend line is the same. This is the trend line that a lot of big trucking companies like to throw around when they're trying to convince people that there's a driver shortage. In pure, raw numbers, compensation has increased since deregulation. Note that even under this most optimistic of scenarios, however, drivers are only making about half of the 60 cents sustainable wage proposed by Dr. Beltzer in part one. Here's the bigger issue. Money today doesn't buy as much as it did in 1980. And when you adjust for inflation, today's drivers are only making about 10 cents per mile or less than half of what they were making before deregulation. And here's why. When truck drivers and the trucking industry is subject to the market, to very strong market forces, and when the, um, the, the cargo owners uh, essentially ended up with all the bargaining power, uh, they could essentially force race, uh, freight rates down, and that's exactly what happened. As freight rates go down, people still have to pay their bills, and that's when they have a strong incentive to work more hours, do more driving, what have you. The number of trucking companies double immediately after deregulation. Shippers locked in their savings by contracting with third-party logistics companies who agreed to move freight at a contracted rate. Electronic load boards increased the reach of brokers from a single truck stop to the entire nation. And individual drivers, lacking the clout of union representation or a national rate-setting body, began giving away more free services, accepting lower rates and waiving legal rights to broker transparency, and driving longer hours without overtime pay. Market forces, having already cut logistics costs in half, with virtually all of those savings going to stockholders and consumers, are now rallying behind driverless trucking technology, the latest free market offering that promises to cut that already slim margin by another third by eliminating the largest remaining cost, human drivers. Truckers know they need to speak up, but they're not exactly sure how to go about it. The biggest and loudest trucking voice is that of the American Trucking Associations, which represents the interests of large fleets. 
independent owner operators are represented by the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association and several smaller splinter nonprofits that tend to form over a specific issue and peter out over time as market forces, including the public demand for highway safety, push back against some of the shortcuts and workarounds that drivers have developed over the years to pay the bills in the face of falling profits. In part three of this series, we'll be going even deeper into this issue of leverage, both commercially and from a regulatory perspective. We'll be dissecting the dynamics of the trucker-broker-shipper relationship and try to answer that age-old free market question, what is our leverage and how can we use it to our advantage? For the Truck Boss Show, I'm Brad Kuhn. I'll see you down the road. Now we go to Carlin on trends. Well, we're now a solid two weeks into 2021, and soon another presidential administration begins, meaning there will be some changes to regulations across several sectors, including transportation. Now, our friends over at Overdrive have compiled a list of some of the things you can expect to change over the next year or so. We'll be going over them over the next couple of weeks, so let's go ahead and get started. When the Trump administration began, it put a stop to some pending regulations, like a speed limiter mandate, sleep apnea screening, and establishing a new minimum amount of liability insurance for all motor carriers. Now, the last time a speed limiter was talked about, it was calling for truck speeds to be governed at 60, 65, or 68 MPH. And there was a rule to look at the 750,000 liability minimum, which was tabled in 2017. Now, it's very likely that those regulations will be reevaluated, edited, and then implemented moving forward. Now, Isela, tell us about this big accomplishment for a Walmart driver. This story is proof that when you set your mind to it, anything is possible. Warren Greeno has been a driver for Walmart since 1982. That's close to 40 years. He is the first driver in Walmart's history to achieve 5 million safe miles of driving. And with him being on the road for a long time, he came across plenty of situations in which he views as a positive influence. He remembers one night being on the highway trying to drive through a snowstorm. He couldn't see much so he decided to stop his tractor trailer in the middle of the highway. When a few moments later, a woman came knocking on the door. The woman's car had slipped off the road into a ditch. Warren felt he was meant to be there. Warren also stated, when I'm done driving for Walmart, I'm done driving. We know when that happens, he will be leaving a legacy behind. As for now, he feels he has a few more miles left in him. Carlin, talk to us about the FMCSA. If you're a driver who had their CDL expire after March 1st, 2020, odds are you're still operating thanks to the FMCSA's COVID-19 emergency declaration. But you still have to have up-to-date physicals, and now that should be a lot easier. The National Registry of Certified Medical Examiners sent out a notice saying that certified med medical examiners can now conduct exams for any drivers that meet the physical standards, regardless of whether they have an expired or unexpired CDL. Also, if you are working with an expired CDL, a heads up for you all, the FMCSA waiver is set to expire the end of February, so start looking to get that renewed before then. Now Isela, what else do we have for them? Carlin, this next story will melt your heart. So our friend Tony Justice has posted on his Facebook page about a little boy by the name of Trison who has been diagnosed with cancer. But let me tell you what's unique about him. Why Tony invited everyone to join the group, Team Trison. Trison is a big fan of trucks and has been ever since he was super tiny. Due to his condition, Trison is stuck in the hospital and we all know that it can get a little boring from time to time. There has been so much love and support from not just the trucking community, but everyone who has got word of Trison's story. T-shirts have also been made, and people have gone to the group page to share many pictures and videos and stories in which Trison's parents read to him daily. We'd also like to send him a quick message. Trison, you're a fighter, strong like them big old trucks that you love so much. We know and believe that you got this. And also, be expecting a box from the Truck Boss Show. And if you haven't joined, we also invite you to do so in Facebook. Search for Team Trison and join the group. Let's light up Trison's days to come. Carlin? A new year means new resolutions and new goals. And if one of yours is to become a driver or to be successful in trucking, we've got some advice from an experienced driver and a fan favorite you'll want to hear. Check out Matt the Little Guy's advice not only for new drivers, but for anyone looking to be successful in this business. What's going on, everybody? Just wanted to... Uh stop in here and get out some good information that I, I, I even get a lot of questions on my channel about this. 
first thing is this, where do you live? And what type of truck driving job do you want to have? You know, do you want to be a dump truck driver? Do you want to be a cement truck driver? Do you want to be over the road? Do you want to be local? What do you want to do? And then once you figure out what you want to do, then you need to start researching companies that are going to hire and train you. What I recommend to do is have a bunch of companies, at least two or three, that will, that look like they're going to fit your needs. Right, get, the, get down a piece of scratch paper, whatever you want to do, write down how much they're going to pay, what's their home time policy, what's their pet policy, what's the policy on taking the trucks home, um, etc. You know, write down all those questions that you think you, that you want to ask, and then when you call each company, you could write down the answers, because a lot of times, when you get on the phone with these recruiters, you know, you may forget to ask a, a specific question that you want answers to. And that way, once you're done talking to all these companies, you have that piece of paper in your hand and you have all the answers and you can make an informed decision. Once you have that done and you choose your training school, your company of choice, then it's really just make sure that your training, your trainer is training you properly. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you're unsure by even the slightest bit on a particular topic, whether it's backing, tandems, how to fill out the paperwork properly, how to you know check in at a receiver, shipper, whatever, don't be afraid to ask those questions. Be prepared, plan ahead, and don't give up. If you really want to do this, and you've got the mindset that you want to do it, there's more than enough information on my channel and lots of other people's channels nowadays that are in trucking where you could find great advice for new drivers. Don't let it discourage you. Don't let someone say, oh no, you can't do it because if you put your mind to it, you'll be able to get it done. So that's my two cents on that. Matt Iso giving us a lot of great information there. And as he's told us before, his YouTube is filled with great info. You know, when he was going through driver school, he documented all that stuff. So if you're a new entrant or maybe someone thinking about, you know, going and getting their CDL, go watch his channel, go tune in go subscribe because you can see a lot of great content from him. And he really kind of gives you the keys to be successful in that endeavor. So it's very cool there. And speaking of some great advice next week, we're going to go ahead and look ahead a little bit. We actually sat down with the CEO of seat, my trucks, and he explains his advice for new entrants as well as maybe drivers just wanting to kind of switch things up. He tells us how you can be successful in this business, just like Matt did. He's going to give us a little bit of insight there. And then, of course, we're also talking uh, – we're kind of sticking with Matt this month. It's a month full of Matt uh, <laughs> because Matt and Joey are actually tuned, are coming back next week as well. They're going to give us a little insight into what they have. You know, They're always adding their commentary on things that are going on. And we sit down with Rebecca Brewster, the CEO of Atri, and we talk about Atri's – Top Industry Issues 2020 survey that they did, you know, they ask you guys, the drivers, to kind of give them some information. You know, what are your top issues for transportation as a whole? And uh, they've compiled that list. They've sent it out to everyone. And now the question is, what are they going to do with all that information? What happens with it? So she, uh, Rebecca Brewster, the CEO, again, answers some of those questions. So she's got a lot of great information you're not going to want to miss. Yeah, that's a lot of great, um, great people, knowledgeable I mean, a lot of good information. So, guys, stay tuned for that. And, of course, you already know we're doing our January giveaway, always hitting you up with something awesome. And what do we have this month, Carlin? That's right. This month we're giving away another Boss Box. And the, you know, the best prize, I guess you could say, in it is going to be the cauldron. You know, you've seen them, us give them away before. They're those awesome, like, thermoses that can make food, keep your co cold drinks cold, warm drinks warm. You know, it's got, like, a smoothie attachment. on. It's all kinds of awesome things in this one little cup. So you're definitely going to want to tune in and try to win that one. It's pinned at the top of our Facebook page. So you'll be able to enter to win. All you have to do is go watch to see how to enter. And then voila, you're done. And it's Bluetooth. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I think it's, it's so an much. awesome cup. Yes, yeah. it is. You're going to love it. It's $100 values, absolutely free, guys. Come on. Well, who yes. wouldn't want to win it? So, don't forget to comment, like, share, tag. Let everybody know the Truck Boss Show is going to be hooking you up in the month of January like we have been. We always hook you up with some awesome prizes. And, Carlin, why do we do this? Because you're the boss.